he is. is. Charlie Carlson Cycling. <laughs> Alright, Tour of Japan Stage 6 Power Analysis. Alright, so first we're just going to go over the results and have a look at the parkour and it's basically a 33 kilometer uphill time trial. Uh, but in a bunch, which is pretty interesting. Average speed, 25 kilometers an hour, which is uh, decent speeds. Anyway, so we have the winner, Marcos Garcia, and we have Herman Pernsteiner. Now, there's a very suspicious gap here, and I'm going to leave it to you to figure out why there's such a, sp sp such a suspicious gap. But these two riders, within 30 seconds, and then there's literally a minute and 20 second gap, and there's a lot of riders finishing within two minutes. Now, potentially, there could be a suspect reason why there is such a grand difference between the first two finishes and the rest of the people. Now, we've got some old favourites down here. We've got Ed Laverick, classic bloke, UK continental rider, six and a half watts per kilo for 20 minutes, is the rumour that he has been spreading on his YouTube channel. Uh, we keep going down, you see a couple other blokes, but Sam Chrome, always good bloke, Cameron Piper, they all upload, and I believe Jose Manuel Diaz does as well. So we will not have any data. Chris Harper does upload, but again, pretty similar time caps, uh, so not, not the most useful. Uh, unfortunately, Hermann Pernsteiner and Marcos Gathia do not upload to Strava, I believe. Anyway, so we're going to Ed Laverick's power data first. Now, Ed Laverick is generally sub-60, about 58, 59 to 57 kilos. We'll take like 58 or so. Anyway, so this is an interesting segment because it doesn't really represent the order in which they finished because, uh, so number one, it wasn't even the fastest one. Uh, Oscar Puyo, who's done some real good stuff, he actually has the fastest time. But anyway, so you can see here that Ed Laverick actually has the fastest time. So obviously he probably started back of the bunch and just moved up. So bad positioning for him, potentially he could have gained some time. So anyway, Ed Laverick did 330 watts uh, and did 42 minutes. So we'll just look at the climb. This is basically the last 40 odd minutes, 10%, 11 kilometers, and there's one point which is like one and a half K at 17%, which is pretty brutal. Uh, altitude, it goes up to 2,000 meters, so might be a little bit of altitude, but I wouldn't say it's wouldn't say it's like a high mountain stage. I mean, over 1,500 meters generally is when people say it starts to affect. So maybe a bit of altitude playing in there, but I don't think it's a, it'll be a huge uh, huge difference uh, because it's not back-to-back -back stages. Anyway, so look, Gregor Borle, 360 watts, HN, 304. Just interesting seeing the numbers. Cameron Piper, again, 313 watts, so pretty light bloke. Uh, but anyway, we'll go back on to uh, the results because you can see Cameron Piper was actually slower than Ed Laverick, uh, faster than Ed Laverick on this, but slower in the, in the segment. So anyway, you can just analyze the effort from Ed Laverick and see pretty much pretty good power here, just stays consistent. Obviously, the gradient changes a bit, uh, and we can look at the cadence here, and it's pretty interesting that none of them actually had the right gears. So grinding at 65 cadence for over a five-minute period is obviously retarded. Like, 16% for 800 meters, 10k an hour. Like, Ed Laverick has just got completely the wrong gears there. Uh, I'd say it's 39.28, should have been 39.32 minimum. Uh, but anyway, that's what you get on continental riders. Often they just don't really have the necessarily the knowledge or the ability to bring so many different cassettes. But you can see here, this is obvious. His preferred cadence is around here. If you look at the first half of the climb, 93 cadence. Uh, then you look at this real low cadence part and then take the second half of the climb, again, 81. So... 60 canes obviously isn't his preferred, and 60 canes at five, five minutes is obviously not very good. And this is also what Cameron Piper said. He said he would have preferred to have a 34 or 36 um, on the front and a 32 on the back. So pretty, pretty good that he's realized that. Uh, it's just a shame he didn't realize in the race, but, you know, that's, that's life, I guess. So anyway, he did 312 watts, uh, which is interesting. I think his power meter potentially could be, uh, could be wrong here, or he weighs about 50 kilos because there's no way he did, like, Ed Laverick did, well, you know, 5.7 watts per kilo, more or less, uh, according to his weight, uh, which is put in Strava. So you can see here he did 5.6. Uh, there's no way he did 4.73. So we can sort of ignore Cameron Piper's power data, unfortunately. Uh, but we keep going. So we have, we have Jose Manuel Diaz Gallego. Sorry for my Spanish pronunciation. Not 100% sure if it's right. Uh, but anyway, you can see here he finished with Israel Cycling Academy, and he finished two minutes down. So he finished how many seconds above left? About... 20 seconds above Ed Laverick, um, so we'll just be able to see if the power data stacks up, and I believe it does. About 40 minutes is generally where I've been seen to be taking 5.73, so 0.1 watt per kilo, 20 seconds, probably a little bit like he might, I think Ed Laverick maybe weighs a little bit more, he might weigh a little bit less, because I, uh, I think it, it wouldn't be that much, 0.1 watt per kilo would be a little bit more than that, so they're more or less the same, uh, more or less the same. So anyway, then we go into Sam Chrome, again, 
no power, uh, sorry, power but no weight, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we'll have a little Google and see what we can find. So he averaged 325 watts for the climb, so I guess you guess he's around low 60s. Uh, so we'll just have a look and see if we can find his weight, because that is very important. Uh, oh, no, Sam Chrome weight, uh, cyclist. Anything, anything coming up? Uh, no, I don't think we'll be able to find his weight. Anyway, so unfortunately, for Sam Chrome, there's no weight for him. Oh, that's because I spelled his name wrong. Uh, oh, I'll have another look. But it's sort of interesting in this uh, that the, the power meters often aren't 100% uh, like consistent between them. But you can sort of see, so if we're saying 5.6, 5.7 for two minutes down, I mean, an estimate for me would be about 5.8 to 6 watts per kilo uh, for this sort of effort, which is, which is pretty insane. Like for 40 minutes, 6 watts per kilo, that's solid. Uh, that means for 20 minutes, maybe 6.2, 6.3, depending on how you... Uh, fatigue, so fresh, at least 6.6 .6 watts per kilo, I'd say 6.6 .6 watts per kilo for 20 minutes, um, which is pretty insane, uh, like, yeah, it's, it's big, uh, very, very big, uh, and it's interesting having these numbers, not often do you get to really see just a full gas time, uh, full gas stage, uh, there was no messing around, unfortunately there's no video footage, so I'm not 100% sure how the stage played out, but I'm, I have read some news articles and reports and it just seemed like they basically just set a real high tempo on the front uh, and then tacked a little bit at the end. Um, but yeah, so pretty, pretty interesting. You can see Ed Averick did a 30 second little sprint. Where was that? I wasn't even up on the climb, that was must have been to get into position. Oh no, it was just a small climb. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to be a continental rider or pro Conny rider and you want to win one of these stages, Six and a half watts per kilo for 20 minutes, probably. That's what I'd say. Good bunch of position, good descending, all of that combined. You get Marcos Garcia. Maybe he's done some good stuff, maybe he's not. I'd say with a very suspicious a one minute, 20 minute, one, one minute, 20 second gap, potential could be something in this. But anyway, all the guys are on the good stuff at the top, let's be honest. Uh, Gregor Borle, three minutes 40 down, good bloke. Uh, it's interesting just looking because uh, we've only got one World Tour squad here, so that's uh, Barry Morita. And you can see that uh, even they're like, average climbers, like Gregor Bolle, still pretty good climber, like he's better than most continental riders. Um, maybe not outright Watts, but I feel like it sort of does show you that uh, it's, it's definitely very interesting. You can see we've got some, some people who finished 27 minutes down, James Gullen, Paul Blake. Uh, I think he might have been ill or something, but you can see a lot of these riders down here. 20 minutes down, probably big sprinters. It's surprising about Ian Bibby, he's normally not too bad a climber. FTP about six watts per kilo, but maybe he just wasn't feeling it today, I'm not sure. Uh, I expect him to be a little bit higher up. Uh, apart from that, Ed Bradbury is, again, he's, um, it's interesting because he finished top five in the Taiwan KOM challenge, so that's, uh, that's pretty interesting um, news there. Maybe he just wasn't feeling it, maybe he was tired, maybe, I don't know, they, the team burned him off for Ed Laverick, I'm not 100% sure, uh, as I haven't seen the stage. But anyway, there, there you go. I uh, hope this is informative, hope this is interesting. I always like having this sort of data, just looking at it and realizing numbers you need, numbers you're at and realizing bridging that gap is very, very difficult. Uh, and it really does give you an appreciation. I mean, if you just don't even know about power, we can just quote average speed. They average 15K an hour for 10% gradient, maybe a little bit. I mean, that's pretty insane for 42 minutes. Very solid. Anyway, cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.